Hey, welcome to everybody. This is Sports Night News. I'm Joe Borg, and if you enjoy the content, please don't subscribe up above or down below in the easy to use widget to help us grow to 200 by the end of February. Our goal for the end of February, I really appreciate it, and thank you all for the support this far. But let's get right into it as our Flyers lost a very hard fought game, 4 to 3, against the Carolina Hurricanes, where for facets of that game, uh, they looked like <clears throat> a team getting more chances, generating more chances and generating more um, just pop in the overall game. They were down at times, but this game didn't have a feeling to the Flyers' overall mantra this season where it felt like when they were down, they kind of been out, where um, this game felt like they kept pushing, they kept coming, they kept coming, and Nito Niederreier scored twice, and we've seen many times, that, or scored once, excuse me, to kick off the scoring, and we've seen many times this season when the Flyers have got scored on first that that's almost just a tanks half empty by the time they get scored on. That wasn't the case. Jerry Mayhew gets a fortunate bounce. Then Tivu Tiravine is able to pop one um, at 12-13 of the second um, on a nice wrist shot that Morton Jones didn't really have much of a chance on because that's the play that it ended up, if I remember correctly, hit the referee. Well, it didn't go hit the referee, but came that on that weird bounce, and then Tiravine scored in front. Then Patrick Brown had a very nice um, fortunate bounce to him as Isaac Ratcliffe made a nice play using his size to wrap it around, and it got in front of Patrick Brown for the goal. Ratcliffe, four points in seven games. Just tweeted this right now, JJ Board 26 on Twitter if you want to follow me over there. But um, Isaac Ratcliffe's been using his size not only potently in the offensive zone, but potently positionally-wise and being able to get steals to generate chances back the other way. He's been mighty impressive, and that's great to see. Jerry May, who also has been mighty impressive, a guy that who knows uh, going forward, uh, when guys come back, the Flyers coaching staff's already said that, if he'll be a guy in the lineup. But all that we know is he's a perfect guy to keep around going forward. He's a guy that adds energy each night, and uh, he's a guy that <clears throat> obviously adds the right mindset each night because he's an undrafted guy that's won the HL MVP and has been scratching and clawing to get another chance at the NHL. So I think he's a great guy to keep around, whether he's in your lineup next year going forward every night or not. That's beside the point. But he's definitely been impressive himself. Vincent Trocek then in the Carolina game, he scored to make it 3-2, uh, to two, but the Flyers then were able to battle back, and at 15-07 in the third, when they got multiple chances on that shift, they finally were able to get a shot by Travis Sanheim, where Oscar Lindblom was able to bat it in in front, and uh, TK also had the other primary assist on that, which I think 20 of his 22 assists are primary assists, so he's been a very good playmaker this year, had three straight 24-goal seasons earlier in his career. I think it's just about getting the right coaching, the right system, the right people around TK to get him back to where we've seen him in full force scoring and playmaking rather than just one or the other. But when we continue and go on and so forth, Brett Pesci, the great underrated defenseman on the Carolina Hurricanes, is who ended up winning it for them. Uh, the Flyers on a great pass from Sandheim to Atkinson had a very good chance earlier in the game, but just were not able to get it done. And uh, that's what happens sometimes is then they come down and score. But this was a really good, I would have to give because of the Flyers getting over 41 shots on a team that limits shots really well in the Carolina Hurricanes and limits good high octane chances where well they got a lot of them. I would have to give them a B plus effort even in a loss for that game, maybe even an A minus because they played extremely well. They just happened to lose in overtime, and as Kirk McDonald of the Ring Royals says, shit happens. So, um, the Flyers lately, uh, they've had better efforts, but blew it late in games, like against Detroit, in Detroit, against Pittsburgh, in Pittsburgh, and against Washington at home, where in this game, they battle back late in the game to get to overtime, get the overtime point, and fortunately, and unfortunately, excuse me, lost in OT. But now, let's go to the next part of this video as our Flyers team check in where we talk about tonight's game, which is against the St. Louis Blues, as the Flyers look to bounce back and beat a team in a very good team in St. Louis after losing to a team in Carolina that I, I honestly was really surprised, happily surprised, with how quick and how well they played them, being able to stay at their pace a little bit better than I thought they would, as I said in my, well, actually, I never was able to post up here because of my computer glitches, but was going to say in my preview yesterday, I think the Flyers, Speed-wise, match up a little bit better. Obviously, Cairo flies. He won the fastest skater, but with other guys on the Blues, did they do necessarily with Carolina, who's one of the faster teams in the league? But they obviously did match up very well with them. So we'll see how now in the back-to-back -back, they come into playing a very good St. Louis Blues team tonight. The Flyers have been a lot more competitive of late. Yesterday, I would say was their best game overall in 2022. To be quite honest, 
as they really battle great against a cup contending team and then just happen to lose an OT where even though they were better in Detroit, in Pittsburgh, and against Washington, they, they blew it in the end, where in this game they battled back in the end, had a very good chance. If it wasn't for Freddie Anderson making a great save on Cam Atkinson, they might have won an OT instead of Brett Pesce getting that goal. But now, <clears throat> we're going to tonight. These are the projected lines. Again, sometimes they change as they did in the one game. I think it was Washington when Cates moved to the fourth line. Ratcliffe moved up. But it's Brandon Saad, Ryan O'Reilly, David Pierron, Pavel Buznevich, Robert Thomas, Vladimir Tarasenko, uh, Ivan Barber, Seb Braden, Shen, and Jordan Cairo. This is all from left wing to right wing. Clem Costin, Tyler Bozak, and Oscar Sunquist. That makes up the four lines for the Blues with Nico Mikula, Colton Paranko, Tori Cruz, Justin Falk. Jake Wallman and Robert Bertuzzo with Jordan Bennington uh, in net with Bennington on the season as a 3-3-5. It's been a very inconsistent season for Jordan Bennington. You've seen highs where he's been the same Jordan Bennington we saw during the cup run. And you've seen really lows, which is why he's at the 3-3-5, 8-9-8. Eight, <clears throat> and they've been at times this year really relying a lot more on Billy Huso, who's been a beast with a 12-3-2 record, one nine seven nine three six. But tonight, it has projected Jordan Bennington, which if you can get the inconsistent side of Jordan Bennington, that can be in the Flyers' favor for sure tonight. When it comes to the Philadelphia Flyers, we have Lindblom, Giroux, Atkinson, Van Riemsdyk, Lawton, Konechny, Willman, Frost, Mayhew, Ratcliffe, Brown, and McEwen. Then on defense, Proveroff, Braun, Sanheim, Risto, Yandel, and Sealer. And then Martin Jones is going to be in net in a back-to-back. Karo -back. Ustamenko will be backing him up again. His Carter Hart still has the eye infection, according to this. Um, and then Karasanka will return after missing one game. And then Bennington starting for the first time since he lost 7-4 to four against the Devils of all teams, who are, again, not the most great team. We don't have room to talk, but just saying. Uh, February 10th, 7-4. to four. So... We'll see which side of Jordan Bennington the Blues are able to get tonight. If the Flyers get the inconsistent side, that definitely is going to benefit them. Because yesterday, they competed against a Vezina contending goaltender in Frederick Anderson this year and one of the top defensive teams immensely well-generating high-octane chances. If you're able to play like they did yesterday, this team is going to have a chance in this game. I mean, again, I'm not predicting any wins anymore this season with this team, but they're going to have a chance in this game because the Blues don't have as much speed on each and every line as the Carolina Hurricanes do, and I think that is going to play into the Flyers' favor. Or favor, excuse me. They've been playing better of late. Hopefully it continues. Hopefully it continues tonight as they face, according to this, Jordan Bennington, and we'll have Morton Jones go again with Kirill Ustamenko backing him up, who's been very hot of late for the Reading Royals and for the Lehigh Valley Phantoms. The Phantoms just can't score for him. That's why they haven't got him a win, but he has very nice numbers in three games in Lehigh Valley this season. Everybody have a great, safe, and pleasant day. Please continue to subscribe down below or up above on the easy-to-use widget to keep the channel growing to 200 by the end of February. Peace out, everybody, and enjoy the game.